Thank you so much to all the supporters that make this channel possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's JPEG Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing what we know about the newly announced Anvil light carrier, the Liberator. In this overview, I'll go over its features, the ship's layout, your purchase options, the Q&A thread, and give you my preliminary thoughts on the Liberator. This month's ship giveaway is the Origin 400i. Stay tuned to the end to learn about how you can enter. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Anvil Liberator JPEG, and we're starting right now. From the Navy's most ubiquitous fighters to massive warships and large-scale troop and vehicular transport, Anvil is synonymous with space combat and military options due in no small part to their laser focus on the mission at hand. Anvil continues its tradition of excellence with the Liberator an open-air vehicle carrier that applies the tradition of long-range transport to a smaller scale. Designed with the same quantum drive and long-distance capabilities of military-spec carriers and pathfinders but tailored to the civilian market, the Liberator puts your feet on the front lines of any operation. Let's just get right into the main feature. The Liberator features two extra-small landing pads and one extra-extra-small pad. In addition to that, inside the garage, there is roughly the same amount of space as the two extra large pads up on top. Based on this image, it's designed to fit two large land vehicles. As you can see, the Anvil Ballista and Nova Tonk will fit. Let's kind of break down this size for a second. I want to figure out how many arrows I can fit between these three pads. I'm going to be using Starship 42 for this. A Starship 42 is an excellent tool, however, I'm not confident that it should be used to truly measure if a ship will fit in such a tight space. So we're going to have to confirm these sizes for a few vehicles first. What we know for sure while looking at this image is that the extra small landing pads on top are wide enough to just barely fit an Anvil Gladiator. And if we line up the Gladiator here, you can see it barely fits as well. Now that we know the sizes of these ships are correct in relation to one another, Let's head to the verse and see how the arrow stacks up to the Gladiator. As we can see here, with the wings up, we can definitely fit two anvil arrows side by side in place of the Gladiator, and two anvil arrows lengthwise. Based on this, we can deduce a squad can comfortably fit 10 anvil arrows on the Liberator without even tapping into the garages below. And honestly, I think that players can get even more creative and fit a few more. This is a generous amount of room for an entry-level fleet carrier. The next feature I want to talk about is the cargo space. The Liberator will feature an independent cargo hold that can hold up to 400 SCU between these two cargo bays. That's right, 400 SCU without sacrificing any vehicle space. This is an unexpected amount of cargo capacity and seems like a mining operations wet dream. In addition, if you aren't looking to carry any cargo, this can certainly fit more land vehicles if you need it to. This feature certainly adds points to getting the Liberator's value to exceed its cost. All right, so it can carry lots of small ships and vehicles, but how well will it be able to defend itself from an attack without needing to scramble any fighters? Well, the Liberator is equipped with a manually operated turret with two size 5 laser repeaters, as well as two smaller automated point defense turrets with two size 2 ballistic gatlings each. In searching through the photos and renderings of the Liberator, I was unable to definitively spot the second automated turret, so I guess it's placed on the underside which is great because it would otherwise be defenseless from that angle if it were placed on top. As for missiles, the Liberator does have bespoke missile racks. However, I was unable to find any info about the sizes or quantities. Let's go over what we know about the components. As far as its shields, it will be equipped with two size 3 shield generators. This is comparable to other large military vehicles. As for the quantum drive, it will be equipped with a size 3 as well. This is excellent because there will be a need to transport smaller vehicles to and from systems in the future. This will make it more logical for someone to hitch a ride on a ship like this, rather than making multiple smaller jumps to arrive at their intended destination. As for the power plant and coolers, there will be two size 3 components for each of these for adequate power and cooling with redundancy as usual for military ships. Some other technical specs that are mentioned are its length at 122 meters. For comparison, the C2 Hercules comes in at 94 meters in length, so it's a lengthy boy. As for the width, it's 68 meters wide, so roughly the same as the Hercules. And finally, its height comes in at 24 meters, again, very close to the Herc's height. And finally, its SCM speed is pretty slow at 115 meters per second. 
However, this is certainly to be expected. Let's take some of the cross-section images of the interior to get an idea of the layout. We'll start with the ingress points. The Liberator does have a rear ramp for vehicles to enter the garages. There is a docking collar on the port side. There is, of course, the front main entrance coming from the lower extra extra small landing pad. There is a main lift on the starboard side, and the port side lift could possibly extend down to the surface access. However, it is unclear in this image. Let's go over these sections. First, we have engineering with the components we talked about earlier. Taking the port side lift, we have docking, a bathroom, eight suit lockers, and 16 jump seats. Heading to the third level, we come to the pilot's quarters. It has its own bathroom, four storage lockers, six suit lockers, and direct landing pad access. Now, let's take that starboard side lift instead. Our first stop takes us to the two cargo storage areas and the two internal garages. That's pretty straightforward. The third level takes us to the man turret, access to the top exterior landing pad, bathroom, four storage lockers, two suit lockers, and the bridge. All right, before you start reaching for your wallets, let's discuss price. Concierge can scoop up the Liberator with LTI and the Condor paint skin for $500 Warbond. That's right, $500. Everyone else can buy it for Warbond without the skin for the same price. And if you use store credit, you can upgrade to the Liberator for $575. Typical with concept sales, there is no option to upgrade and get the Warbond price. Concierge can also pick up that Condor paint for $19. And lastly, the Liberator is available in a few packs. The Liberator Fighter Pack with the Titan, Arrow, Hawk, and Cyclone TR for $720 Warbond and $820 standalone. It is also available in the Liberator Strike Pack with the Gladiator, Super Hornet, Hurricane, and Ballista. And if you're concierge, you can pick up this pack for $1,050 Warbond or $1,195 standalone. One really great thing to note, if you purchase a Liberator, you'll get a Super Hornet and an M2 as a loaner until it's released. Before I go over my overall thoughts, let's rapid fire through the Q&A while I share my thoughts on the questions asked here. Will the Liberator be able to repair, rearm, and refuel the ships it's transporting? Yes, it will support basic levels of RR&R, but it will need to be done manually by players and supplies will need to be stored in the cargo bay. This is excellent. While I was writing this script, I took a potty break in the middle of reading the question, and while I was contemplating, I thought to myself, it would be cool if you could buy a repair station that would take up cargo space, but allow you to repair any ships that could fit on board. And it looks like we'll be able to do almost exactly that. Are ships on the pads protected by the size three shield now that we have SDF shield tech? Just like the Kraken, the shields extend a few meters out and will partially cover ships on the pads. I am slightly disappointed by this, but it's really not that big of a deal. The combined damage that this thing can deliver to the battlefield between its own weapons and missiles and what it can potentially carry on board, it will be well protected as long as the crew is ready. What are the largest ships that can be parked on the Liberator? The garages and the front landing pad can fit a Tumbrel Nova, Anvil Ballista, or an extra extra small ship. As for the upper pads, they can fit most single seat fighters like the Sabre and Hornet, as well as the Miss Prospector. This is a lot of space and I can't wait to see that Prospector try to fit on that extra small pad. Are they saying you can bring two Prospectors? Will it be possible to place one large ship on both of the top pads? Yes, you can, but you will not be able to spawn it this way. You will have to manually land a ship to fit in this configuration. This is certainly to be expected and I couldn't imagine it going any other way. How does the Liberator's armor compare to other military vessels? The Liberator will pack medium to heavy armor. This seems fine to me, however, until we actually get armor, this is kind of arbitrary to me. Does the 400 SCU include the garages or just the cargo bays? The 400 SCU only refers to the cargo bays, not the garages. Cargo placed in the garages will not be mag secured. This is excellent and way more cargo than what I would have expected it to hold. Plus. We don't know what this entails yet, but you may be able to store more unsecured cargo in the future. What is the difference between this and the M2? The M2 is not designed to carry spaceships, but the Liberator is specifically designed for this role. Duh. Will we be allowed to spawn more ships in the future without our first vehicle being despawned? Yes, the current limitations are temporary. 
Can you lock down ships on pads? If so, can they be forcibly removed? They are currently in discussions on how this will work and have nothing to say on the matter at this time. The Liberator is described as having extreme range. How does this compare to the Kraken in Idris? When they use the word extreme, they're referring to other ships of its size. Can land vehicles be driven up the garage door? This can be done, but if the door takes enough damage, it will become inoperable and the rear access will be the sole means of removing vehicles and the cargo inside. What are the two cylinders on the lateral side of each engine? They have no function and are part of the rule of cool. Huh. Will the Liberator be able to traverse jump points with ships on the deck? Yes, if the ship is landed on the deck, it will jump with the Liberator. Is the Liberator a capital class ship as listed on the ship matrix because it doesn't seem to have capital class components? Capital class ships are not defined by their components. However, this is an error and should say large instead. Why would we expect the ship matrix to be correct? Where is the tractor beam located and can it be used to pull an in-op ship onto the pads and be transported off? The tractor beam is mounted on the passenger side under the upper remote turret and needs to be deployed to use and can be used to aid in placing ships. What? This is going to be dope. Does the Liberator offer facilities to house the crew of the ships being transported? Yes, they will have their own dedicated area of the ship, complete with food services, lockers, storage, a seating area, and a space shitter. When I do research into a JPEG ship, I get a deeper understanding of its purpose and role in the verse, and I always end up loving the ship a lot more once I educate myself on its ins, outs, and insert myself into the shoes of the crew members or pilot that might operate it. But I have to tell you that this one caught me by surprise. I was totally expecting to not care about this ship. The Liberator is the ship I didn't know I needed. It has everything an org needs to carry out logistical operations. From sending a squad of fighters for an assault on Pyro's space races, or a small crew ferrying passengers to and from systems, to a vast mining operation that would include land mining vehicles, scouts and scanners, a prospector, a crew of hand miners taxied by inertia, and even a couple of arrows for security detail, all on one ship. But even with all of this functionality, there is one glaring issue that is stopping me from adding the Liberator to my fleet, and that's the price. $500 is a lot of money for a ship that can only be fully utilized if you have at least five other players in need of such a ship. And when I think about that, I get a little weary about spending that kind of money. What if someone in my group already owns one? We don't need another. Why should I be the one to fork out the money for such a ship? With Pyro and Nyx on the horizon, the Liberator is going to be one of the most important ships in the first. But I'm going to have to wait until it's available for purchase with Alpha UEC before I can add it to my fleet. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear about yours in the comments below. This month's ship giveaway is the 400i. There are 10 ways to enter, each giving you more points and a greater chance to win. To enter, just visit subliminal.gg giveaway. Pro tip, the redeemed Twitch channel point rewards can be done once per live stream. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime gaming subscriptions and sending out for UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminal.gg to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership liking and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.